Hidden among the coastal wilderness of Louisiana and Texas are the echoes of ancient history, almost forgotten. Stories about indigenous tribes once thought lost and curious creatures hiding ancestral secrets. Today, Colossal has brought these survivors together to turn back time and restore what once was almost lost. Our story begins with the Karankawa people, an indigenous tribe that lived along the Texas Gulf Coast from Galveston Bay to the Corpus Christi area. The Karankua people were among the first indigenous people encountered by European colonizers who decimated their populations through disease and warfare. Despite these trials and tribulations, the Karankua remained, and their fight for survival continues today. Well, we're in conservation mode. You know, we are trying to reestablish ourselves by gathering all of our families, all of our clans. The state of Texas or the United States will not recognize us and say we're Karankawa. They will give us the descendancy of whatever is written down on a paper, right? Which we have had to mask ourselves with that for survival. I want people to know that Karankawa people are still here, that we have a very rich culture. I want people to know that we're just like everybody else, you know, that we accept people, we love people, and that the biggest rule for us is respect. Respect me and my people as being Karankawa and where we are from and the things that we have to do. The name Karankua means dog lovers or dog raisers, which brings us to the next chapter of our story. The Ghost Wolf, from Louisiana to the same Texas coast that the Karankua inhabit. These enigmatic canids defy easy classification because of a secret hidden in their DNA. The Ghost Wolves are more than an evolutionary curiosity. Recent genetic studies have uncovered their extraordinary significance. These animals harbor a genetic legacy once thought lost. The DNA of the critically endangered American Red Wolf, a species declared extinct in the wild in 1980. The Ghost Wolves are an amazing discovery made right here in Galveston Island by Ron Wooten, along with our partners Josh Henderson, Kristen Przeski, and Bridget Von Holt. They're uncovering lost genetic diversity of the American Red Wolf that's found in what we thought were coyotes here in Galveston Island. That's an extraordinary opportunity for us to help restore the red wolf population. As we identify more and more red wolf DNA and lost genetics of the red wolf in these coyotes, it offers us an opportunity to help restore genetic diversity to the critically endangered red wolf population. The taxonomic and evolutionary history of red wolves has been a hot topic for a long time. Because they're morphologically and genetically quite similar to coyotes, there has been a back and forth in the literature on what exactly is a red wolf. We're trying to unravel and reconstruct how that red wolf DNA is transferred from a red wolf into a coyote, how it continues to live, that DNA on the landscape. And now with Colossal's collaboration, trying to harness that to help do good, give new opportunities for the red wolf captive breeding program and their species survival. If we can bring that DNA back in through genetic rescuing, then the outlook changes dramatically for not only the red wolf being on the brink of extinction, but for any endangered species where these tools can be applied. Using Colossal's Genetic Rescue Toolkit, we're able to identify key genetic markers in this ghost wolf population. Those genetic markers can identify key red wolf traits that can help us revitalize this endangered population. Next, we clone ghost wolves with the highest proportion of red wolf ancestry. These clones will form the foundation of an insurance population and ensure that ghost wolves can live on in the wild without depleting their already fragile numbers and cloning is just the beginning. By using gene editing tools, we aim to restore traits lost to time. Traits like the broad skull, reddish fur, and distinct behaviors 
that would have defined the original Red Wolves of the Gulf Coast. The duality between the Ghost Wolves and the Karankawa is beautiful. We had had a ceremony several weeks before a uh, ghost dance about the ancestors returning and giving us signs about Karankawa people coming out of the woodworks and meeting and starting to unify again. And we took that as the symbol. We said, this coyote is there and, and it's been hiding for over 20 years. That's like Karankawa people and it's reemerging and letting itself be known. And as we begin to learn more about ghost wolf, red wolves, you know, and the role that they're playing in, in, in conservation, that's where we are as Karankawa people. We're in conservation mode. The story of the Karankwa and ghost wolves is intertwined, like the strands of a double helix, the very essence of life itself. Bound by history and resilience, they are more than survivors. They are living symbols of a hopeful future. In a sacred gesture, the Karankwa have bestowed a name on the first cloned ghost wolf breathing new life into an ancient legacy. The ceremony that we were part of today was to commemorate the birth and the naming of Nekakaida and uh, the celebration of their creation. When we came as a people, the council said, what name will we give this pup? And the name came Nekakaida, means ghost daughter. What we did today was we prepared people who are going to have very close contact with Nekakaida to recognize them as guardians of Nekakaida. We blessed them with ceremonial necklaces. Um, we blessed uh, Nekakaida with a blessing of Grandmother Moon. When we do that naming ceremony, we sing a song, a unique song that had never been sung before with the name. That means we give that name life, we give it to the person or to the animal, and the animal becomes the embodiment of that name. When we speak those names, we give that life to that particular individual. And that's really what we did in that ceremony. So today when we were sitting around in a circle and, and Absalom was sharing the story of his people and the meaning of the coyote and the meaning of the red wolf to his people, I mean, it was a very emotional, powerful moment. I think for me, it was just very, felt very honored to be able to be a part of that. You know, he shared with us how uh, few people have ever seen those types of ceremonies. So just to get to participate in it, to be blessed by him and his people, uh, I mean, it's an honor that you can't really explain. It's really challenging to sort of express how meaningful the last sort of hour was. Nothing could have prepared me for being welcomed by the Karankawin members this morning and also being invited to participate in the naming ceremony for Nekakaida. I'm speechless and it actually left me with a feeling, kind of rejuvenated hope in humanity that communities who could be quite different in their origin and their history and their experience can come together and champion this new vision and new ways forward. I have, I have no words about it. I've never imagined I could be a part of something like that. During the ceremony, I felt just um, humbled and also elevated. I felt a, a deeper connection to the natural world around me and, and remembering that it's all of our heritage, this precious earth that we live on. And I also felt pretty proud that the steps that Bridget and I and others have been doing are, are culminated to this. Like this is, um, it's just really humbling. So as we were participating in the ceremony, I had to take a few moments to be able to look around and see, you know, what. Bridget and Kristen and Stefano were sort of going through and it was really an amazing experience to kind of see how significant and and not somber but very very kind of serious moment everybody was having to, to reflect on what we were doing the meaning it had for everybody else I saw tears in the eyes of, uh, of Bridget and Kristen I think to be able to take the work they've done and bring them to a moment like this was really fulfilling for me personally I think it also symbolized an amazing step in the way that Colossal is engaging with Native Americans as leaders in conservation.
Neka Kaida represents a huge step forward. Everything about her, her DNA, her existence, her personality, the way her ears flop. She gives us hope. She gives us so many opportunities.